right, do we have everyone here? Um, I will go ahead and call this meeting to order. Please join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll call, please. Council Member Days. Here. Council Member Dunaway. Okay. Um, present. Council Member Fitch. Here. Council Member Gray. Present. Council Member Clancy. Here. Council Member Trachis. Present. Council Member Harder. Present. Madam Chair, we have a quorum. Is there a motion for approval of the journal of the meeting of June 16th, 2020? So moved, Councilwoman Gray. Second. Sure. Days. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. The June 16th, 2020 journal is approved. We have no bid openings this evening, so we will move to communications. Madam Chair, we have no tax compromises this evening, so we will move to zoning matters. Under zoning matters, item number one, sixth district. Receive file and county council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation, please. So ordered. Moving on to other communications, item number one, second district. Receive file and hold on the order of business. So ordered. Item number two, seventh, third, and sixth districts. Receive file and refer to the county executive. So ordered. Item number three, fourth district. Receive file and the county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number four. Receive file and the county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation and that will be the order. Item number five, fifth district. Receive file and the county counselor be directed sixth. to prepare the appropriate legislation, please. I'm sorry, that was sixth district. Thank you. You're welcome. So ordered. Item number six, sixth district. Receive file and the county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. There are no add-ons this evening, so we will proceed with the report of the county executive. Thank you, thank you, Lisa. And good evening, everyone. This is a historic time we are in. Change is necessary and change is long past due. I was asked by a reporter earlier this week, what's the biggest challenge facing St. Louis County? And I said, um, systemic racism. It's as simple as that and it's as complex as that. We see a play out in various forms, but it's the root of all the fundamental flaws of our county. As COVID-19 crisis began making its way to our community, we saw how disproportionately impacted um, our African-American community was. Generations of discrimination left behind many of our residents without easy access to healthcare, access to health insurance, or access to affordable, healthy food access to a quality education. On top of the pandemic, the murder of George Floyd sent people into the streets, angry, scared, and demanding justice. A civil rights movement that has highlighted once again that we are a divided country that has let the status quo hover for too long. We are seeing changes, voices being heard, but acknowledging systemic racism is only the beginning. We have to all work together to end it. As county executive, I've insisted that all policy decisions be made through a lens of equity and that diverse voices are at the table when we make those decisions. In our COVID response, I said the funds from the federal grant that we receive would go to those who need it the most. And that's what is happening. We are working with public health experts, the Brown School at Washington University and dozens of community partners to make sure our response is the right one reaching the most vulnerable and those who historically underserved. 
My commitment is to do all that I can to change the course of this county and one that truly is a place where there is justice for all, equal opportunity for all. But I can't do it alone. Government can't do it alone. And I'm calling on corporate leaders, faith-based groups, community service clubs, and schools to be all in when it comes to change. A response to a pandemic should not be political. A response to systemic racism should not be political. Let's work with all of those who've been left behind and make sure they are at the table as we chart a path forward. When I became county executive in April 2019, our boards and commissions were 23% minority and 38% female. Today, 41% of our members are minorities and 58% are female. Our boards and commissions, which help shape our policy and guide our decision making, must look like our community to ensure conversations are robust and meaningful and representative of St. Louis County. Juneteenth events were held around the country in this past weekend, including here. It's heartening to see more people, more white people engaged in learning the chapters of history conveniently left out of some classrooms. We have to know our complete history, not just the parts that are easy to teach. Otherwise, we cannot truly believe the future will be any different than the past. As I often say when talking about the pandemic, we are all in this together. To successfully curb the virus, we must social distance, stay home when sick, wear masks, and wash our hands regularly. No one can be the exception in this battle to prevent more sickness and death in our community. And no one can be an exception in our fight to end systemic racism. As communities across the country weigh whether to remove statues or rename streets, those same conversations are going on here. And last week, I asked Hazel Irby, our Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, to work with our Parks Department, our Public Works, and our Transportation Department to review names of roads, parks, and statues countywide. We must address this in a thoughtful and organized way. I don't think we should be looking at these one at a time when someone brings it to our attention. The intent of the review is to make sure that names are in line with the county's values of equity and inclusion, and the symbols that define our community should not be symbols that divide our community. We must not let this moment fade into inaction. And let's seize the opportunity to respect differences, to speak up, and to listen. To admit changes are necessary and to work together to make those changes. That's all for now. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Dr. Page. Um, report of special committees. Uh, no update this week. So receive file and the report dated June 16th, 2020 be adopted as submitted. Second days. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And for the next item, the Committee of the Whole from last week um, regarding Bill number 109, I will receive file and the report dated June 16th, 2020 be adopted as submitted. Second, days. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And now moving into the public forum portion of our evening tonight. Um, just a reminder to everyone about what our rules of the forum are. Um, again, this, this forum is a source of pride for all of us here on St. Louis County Council and in county government, and we have the opportunity each week to provide a positive example to residents and other policymaking bodies in the community. I encourage every speaker to um, participate in this forum by speaking with tolerance and respect towards the council, towards each other, and towards other officials in county government. Um, commenters must submit comments to council comments at stlouiscode.com on the day in which the meeting is being held, at least an hour prior to the meeting, um, to be recorded into the public record at the meeting. The email must contain the commenter's name and physical address. The comment must be limited to 400 words or less, which is the equivalent of three minutes of speech, which is what we would be enforcing during our in-person meetings, if we were meeting in person. And the administrative director or a designee will read the comment into the record during the meeting and it will be recorded into the journal. So with that, Madam Clerk, if you could proceed with the comments. Yes, Madam Chair, this evening we have 27 written public comments. 
Madam Chair, the first comment, <clears throat> excuse me, is from Stephen Bailey, 43 Aberdeen Place, Clayton, Missouri, 63105. My wife's initial response to cries to defund police departments was not in my backyard. My response is not in their backyard. High crime neighborhoods not benefit from politically enforced police disengagement. Professor Ronald G. Fryer from Harvard Economics reports his study of police disengagement showed marketed increases in criminal activity. His study also reveals a shocking racial difference in police use of non-deadly force. See Wall Street Journal A17 from today. The latter may indicate a mindset that deserves investigation and cure. Poor neighborhoods need good police to keep the citizenry safe and productive. Do the right thing. Don't reflexively do something. Stephen Bailey. Following comment from Shannon L. McCullough, DVM, 9948 Letzinger Road, St. Louis, Missouri, 63124. Dear St. Louis County Council, last week's County Council meeting started with a letter by Sam Page. Sam Page wants to make sure that roads and parks in the county are named for people who are aligned with the county's values. Asked if he had any specific streets in mind, Page said that he had heard concerns about Dorset Road. In quotes, but really is obvious that there could be other street names in our community and rather than going through them one at a time, I think we should have a process and the thoughtful review, end quote. What happens in a few years if there is a majority of Muslims leading St. Louis County Council and they decide to do away with any name that has anything to do with Christianity? Church Bell Lane, Church Road, Church Street, wipe those names out. What happens in a few years if there's a majority of people on the County Council that don't like names associated with conservatives or anyone related to the Republican Party? Churchill Lane, Roosevelt Drive, Ford Drive, wipe those names out. What happens in a few years if there is a majority of people on the county council that are environmentalists that don't like names associated with anyone associated with the chemical company? Queenie Park, goodbye, or a company that builds airplanes, James McDonald County Park, goodbye. Let's go back to the statement about having roads and parks in the county named for people who are aligned with the county's values. Who is to decide what the county's values are? Are you going to put this to a vote of the people in St. Louis County? Seriously? Who gets to decide this? Who gets to decide which names are okay and which names are not? Who gets to decide which statues are okay and which ones aren't? Who's going to pay for all the changes that will have to be made when the names are changed? Are you going to pay all the businesses along Dorset Road that will have to change business cards, letterhead, signs, etc.? If I were one of these businesses, I would contact an attorney. Is there an adult in the room? Shannon McCullough. The following comment from Kathy Todd, 2518 Whitewater Court, Fenton, Missouri, 63026. Dear Interim County Executive Page, Council Chair Clancy and the St. Louis County Council. Renaming streets is an utter waste of time and taxpayer money. You can't erase history by changing names. History is a race not by teaching the full breadth of it, which has been the problem in our schools. Please do not even think about defunding police. It leads to anarchy. We don't want to be Seattle. We, do, we want none of that nonsense here. There is no proof of systemic racism in the St. Louis County Police Department. As of today, children still can't get into the optometrist to get refills on contacts, really. But the statutes are most... The statues are the most pressing issue, really. Cases of COVID-19 and hospitalizations are still trending down, but heavy restrictions, restrictions on churches remain. Why? This makes no sense. Dr. Page needs to stop scaring people about masks. Healthy people should not wear masks. It has been proven to cause more harm to your lungs to wear one. Stop shaming people, Dr. Page. Sincerely, Kathy Todd. Excuse me. Excuse me. My name is Jeff Lowry, and I live at 7186 Christopher Drive, and I live next door to the above-mentioned property. I'm writing you again this week to request that the company known as Monte Nito not be allowed to open their commercial business in a residential neighborhood. There are some new developments in the, in the past week on two separate occasions 
There were multiple work vehicles parked outside of the property with my understanding that they were there to bid on various types of jobs that needed to be done for Monte Nito. Needless to say, this is making the neighbors in the area a little nervous, if not angry, as it seems as though things are moving forward, allowing this company to move in and open business operations. We've been told that a formal review process is being done by the county to determine the appropriateness of a commercial business being allowed to open in our residential neighborhood. We need the county support and help in making this go away. We as taxpaying citizens are feeling abandoned by the very people who are supposed to be protecting our interests. The interest of a large corporation is being put ahead of the interests of the people who have lived and worked and paid taxes their whole lives. This is wrong. There is no way that anyone can convince me that a medical treatment facility has to be allowed to open up right in the middle of a residential neighborhood. This company has pulled the old bait and switch on the county and you're allowing it to happen to you. They call themselves a group home for the purposes of being allowed to purchase the property through though nowhere. And I mean, nowhere do they refer to themselves as a group home in their websites or even in conversations that have been had with representatives of the company. That's the bait for those of you following along. They do, however, refer to themselves as a medical or residential treatment facility in various areas of their website. And there's the switch. This company will call themselves whatever they need to call, whatever they need to in order to be allowed to open up business. This is plain and simple, a large commercial business that will generate over $2.5 million in revenue annually. And that's the end because it's over the 400 word limit. Following comments from Terry Deloge, Number two, Fair Lake Drive, Chestersfield, Missouri, 63005. Renaming the streets is an utter waste of time and taxpayer money. You can't erase history by changing names. History is erased by not teaching the full breadth of it, which has been the problem in our schools. Please do not even think about defunding the police as it leads to anarchy. We don't want to be Seattle. Good grief, it's an utter debacle there, and we want none of that nonsense here. There is no proof of systemic racism in the St. Louis County Police Department. How can Clancy and Dunaway claim to respect black people while refusing to vote for Zena Hackworth's accomplishments? I guess ripping statues down is more politically correct than voting to honor the wonderful lifelong work of a black county resident. May I ask why you and your team do not respond to any of the 30 plus emails of public, of public comment that you have received in the past six weeks? Are you each a member of the council to serve your own interests or the citizens of St. Louis County? Concerned, Terry Deloge. Continuing with public comments. Leah James, 1125 Maple Avenue, Spanish Lake, Missouri. I have lived in Spanish Lake for 30 years. I have seen a continual decline in the upkeep of my neighborhood in the entire area for the past several years. There are more rentals than ever before, and it seems that almost every home that is sold becomes a rental. Some of the problems with rental homes is there is no pride of ownership by the people who rent these homes, and the companies that own them only care about getting the rent and not maintaining the homes or policing their tenants. One of the problems that I'm currently dealing with is that many residents are leaving their trash containers at the curb 24-7 instead of placing them behind the building line as required by the county ordinance. It started with a few residents, but now it has spread like the virus. Another issue is the overgrown lawns and litter. Even the drainage ditches along Larimore are full of trash and prevent the flow of water into the drains. I don't see any evidence of the county enforcing this ordinance or many others that affect property values and the upkeep of neighborhoods. I would like to ask County Executive Dr. Page, what are you planning to do about the upkeep of neighborhoods in North County? I hear you talking almost daily about what you are doing to address COVID-19, but nothing about helping people like me in North County who are trying to maintain our neighborhoods. When can I expect to hear from you about my concerns? From Robert C. Anderson, 12032 Glen Oak, <clears throat> excuse me, Glen Oak Drive, Maryland Heights, Missouri, 63043. Regarding possible street name changes and to educate people, the natural environment may also be considered. 
The environment is a major world concern today, and using names of local native plants, trees, animals, birds, insects, etc., may increase an appreciation for what we have in our area and perhaps what we have lost. As for history, per Daniel Wolpart, son of Dr. Stanley Wolpart, who was Professor Emeritus in History at UCLA, quote, as I listen to the cries of, we will forget our history if we change statues in the public square, I know that my father is rolling in his grave. For you see, we do not learn history from a statue. From classrooms in Los Angeles, California, he was able to teach thousands of students about South Asian history without one statue anywhere in sight. Because of course, we learn history from books and research and conversation. Daniel Wolpert supports his views and then ends with, quote, at this moment, we have yet another opportunity to reckon with our history and changing these public monuments is part of this process. Let us not be afraid to actually learn our history, to struggle with it, to face it head on honestly, to de deconstruct our myths and come to a new, better vision for America, end quote. According to Al Dershowitz, Dershowitz, in another opinion on today's cultural changes, quote, of course there's a danger of going too far. There's a danger removing Washington and Jefferson and other of our founding fathers who themselves owned slaves. Look, we have to use this as an educational moment, end quote. Mr. Dershowitz continues by saying, quote, we have to take some of the statues and perhaps move them to museums where they can be used to teach young students about how statues are intended, sometimes for bad purposes, to glorify negatives and to hold back positive developments. But the idea of willy-nilly going through and doing what Stalin did, just erasing history and rewriting it to serve current purposes, does pose a danger, and it poses a danger of educational malpractice, of missing opportunities to educate people, and of going too far, end quote. The process of changing street names and removing statues is best done in a democratic manner without riots and violence. Moving forward, renaming some street names based on our local natural environment can also be a good choice that is, a, that is acceptable to all. From Anna Crafton, 7204 Christopher Drive, St. Louis, Missouri. Your constituents in Oakville are still mad as heck about the shady dealings that went on in order for the sale of 7190 Christopher Drive to be approved without any input from the representative of that district or the neighborhood it will directly affect. Shame on those involved who clearly did not do their job in checking out the for-profit business Montinito and what they are planning to do with said property. Any inspection of the area and the house involved should have raised red flags. They would have seen that the lot square footage of the property is greater than the actual usable area, which makes any changes to the driveway or additional parking suspect to drainage issues to the properties around the site or the floodplain below. It is the county going it is the county going force Montenito to pay for any damages that occur because of their new construction is the county going to uphold current zoning laws that states no more than eight occupants are allowed to live on the property judging by the lack of effort that went into checking out this proposal from the start i am not confident dr page you have the power to stop this now please do from chris struckhoff 10 448 gregory court st louis missouri at last week's county council meeting when County Executive Sam Page spoke, he omitted condemning the assaults on the police and others during the riots, the burning of our cities, including St. Louis, the looting and disregard for social distancing during the insurrection after George Floyd's killing, or taking a stand against defunding the police, or asking people to snitch on rioters they recognized that were not social distancing as Sam Page did regarding the party goers at the Lake of the Ozarks establishment. If the police are defunded, violence will never end, but freedom and justice will. Look at what has gone on in Seattle, Washington, in the autonomous zone. Democrat mayor of Seattle referred to it 
more or less, as a love fest and refused to act until recently. Washington State Democrat governor would not acknowledge the problem in the autonomous zone. The police chief of Seattle said armed people were patrolling the zone, with rapes committed, and threats to burn down the police precinct. The mayor has finally agreed to dismantle the zone because of the shootings. This is a good example of what will happen if you elect politicians who will not do their job protecting the citizens who elected them and will not allow the police to do their job. In any organization, including the police, there are always a few bad apples that must be dealt with in an effective and just manner. Last year, 147 policemen were killed in the line of duty. Recently, more than 700 officers were shot, stabbed, run over, hit with objects across the country, and some of these men died in the insurrection after George Floyd's death. Police unions should not protect bad cops. Mayors and prosecutors for cities and counties should not shirk their responsibilities in standing up to unions when needed and to prosecute when justified. If these two steps had been followed in Minneapolis, George Floyd's senseless killing may not have happened. No one I knew thought Floyd's killing was justified. I believe our nation was for justice on behalf of George Floyd. Most policemen are dedicated to protecting citizens and encounter stressful and dangerous situa situations. I thank them for taking on this career and also thank their supportive families. From Eleanor Pardini, 7290 Richmond Place, Maplewood, Missouri, 63143. I am a Maplewood City Council member. On May 12th, On May 12th, I supported our municipal resolution requesting equitable disbursement of CARES Act funds for COVID-19 related public safety costs. I now regret my vote. My thinking has evolved. We know more about county relief spending and we are reckoning with institutional racism and implications for policy. CARES Act funding should support the health and social needs of those hit hardest by COVID-19. As COVID-19 is intersecting with existing disparity due to racism, it is critical relief goes to those most impacted and with the greatest need. The county has the ability and infrastructure to do this. Public health, humanitarian assistance, and child care stabilization is funded. Homelessness prevention, senior care, technology to access services, and child care relief are essential. Municipal residents are county residents and can access services through the county. County decision making is supported by staff and advisors with expertise in epidemiology, public health, housing, homelessness prevention, and economic sta stabilization who are using equity indices to make decisions. Municipal resolutions request reimbursement for budgeted regular payroll of police and fire services only to municipalities with those services. The $47 million request is excessive. Only public health is designated more. Municipalities will struggle as the pandemic and recession progress, but they won't struggle evenly. Some municipalities like my own with less impacts of COVID-19 and strong property and sales tax will need less relief. Others will need more. Disperse relief to provide maximal support to people experiencing COVID-19 impacts most acutely. The municipal concept of fair share will exacerbate inequity and shift resources away from health and social need. Distributing resources based on population has never produced equitable outcomes in this region and will not do so now. Ask who benefits, who is harmed, what shift will reduce racially disparate outcomes. Our community demands we reimagine what conditions and systems look like to ensure safety, health, and wholeness for people to live their best lives. We must ask tougher questions before we rubber stamp status quo re requests from traditional power structures and before allocating resources to public safety over people. We must think regionally with a racial equity lens. 
Healthcare, housing, and education will collapse if we don't act regionally. We go farther if we do. It is time to ensure resources get to the people, communities, and sectors where they are needed most, and the county is the body to accomplish that. Madam Chair, continuing. <clears throat> Kate Stratton, 10253 Eddingham Terrace, St. Louis, Missouri, 63128. I can't believe that interim county executive Sam Page's main priority at the last county council meeting was to look at all the names of streets in St. Louis County to see if they need to be re renamed. We don't like what if, if we don't like what you have done, Sam Page, to St. Louis County, can we rename Page Avenue to something else? Renaming streets is an utter waste of time and taxpayer money, as well as focusing on removing historic statues. You can't erase history by changing names or removing monuments. History is erased by not teaching the full breadth of it, which has been the problem in our schools for years. Please do not even think about defunding the police. It leads to anarchy. We don't want to be Seattle. It's an utter debacle there, and we want none of that nonsense here. There is no proof of systemic racism existing in the St. Louis County Police Department. Hopefully you will use common sense and not release any more prisoners from the jails to protect them from the coronavirus. Why don't you start thinking about protecting county residents from criminals? How can squad members Clancy and Dunaway claim to respect black people while refusing to vote for Zena Hackworth's accomplishments? I guess ripping statues down is more politically correct than voting to honor the wonderful lifelong work of a black county resident. As of today, children still can't get into an optometrist to get refills on contacts, really? Is changing street names the most pressing issue? It is a distraction from the County Council's lack of action on items that truly matter. Cases of COVID-19 and hospitalizations are still trending down, but the heavy restrictions on churches remain. Dr. Page needs to stop caring, scaring people about masks. Healthy, healthy people should not wear masks. Stop shaming people, Dr. Page. Hopefully at one of these county council meetings, the issues and concerns raised by St. Louis County residents will be addressed. Thank goodness the elections are coming. Maybe someone else will be willing to answer the concerns of county residents. Following comments from Stacy Washington, 167 Lamp and Lantern Village, Chesterfield, Missouri, 63017. Last week, Interim County Council Page's main priority was to examine the names of the streets in St. Louis County to see if they need, required renaming. What kind of nonsense is this? Renaming streets is another waste of time and taxpayer money. Not, <clears throat> not one life will be improved by changing street names. If we must change a street name, let's start with Page Boulevard. Another crazy liberal idea is to defund police departments. Defunding the police is totally off the table for St. Louis County because it leads to anarchy. We value law and order here. We want less crime here. We actually want better leadership on the council too. What we don't want is to emulate Seattle. Good grief, it's an utter, utter debacle there and we want none of that nonsense here. We need more police, not less. One more thing, how utterly insulting it is that two white women Squad members Clancy and Dunaway refused to vote for Zena Hackworth's accomplishments. I guess representing the squad is more important than, on, than voting to honor the wonderful lifelong work of a black county resident. Black lives matter though, right? Lastly, COVID-19 infections and hospitalization, hospitalizations are still trending down, but heavy restrictions on churches remain. The impact of houses of worship being fully open cannot be underestimated. Free us, we want to attend our churches Sincerely, Stacy Washington. Following comments from Deb Matush, 1455 Craig Wold Road, Kirkwood, Missouri, 63122. You must be excited that the Wuhan virus deaths are down. Our hospitals are ready for all patients and the morgue was built but was never needed. St. Louis County residents rock, excuse me, St. Louis County residents rock but don't push us too far you poke the bear too many times and the growl will be heard and felt countywide. The protests that have been allowed in St. Louis County could happen all over again, but for different reasons. I'm sure all protesters will be treated the same regardless because you've laid the groundwork for acceptability of large gatherings without repercussion. 
It is exciting to think our community will be thriving again. Schools, stores, houses of worship, recreational facilities. I've been at the Lake of the Ozarks for four days now, and it is thriving. Their numbers are low as are mask wearers and no mask shaming. To this end, my requests. Open fully. Stop the fear mongering with masks. The numbers no longer support it. Put it with the street sign stuff. Be transparent with the CARES Act money. Support small businesses unless you want them to leave. Try to attract new businesses. Your main responsibilities should be fiduciary, safety, and economics. We keep asking and we'll keep asking the county council, where are you? These rabbit trails of street signs, shutdowns, restrictions are counterproductive and a waste of time. November can't come fast enough. Remember, Mr. Page, you were not elected. You were appointed as an interim leader when it came time for you to stand for the citizens of St. Louis County. You sat down. As for you, Ms. Clancy, you've been you've been sitting. Council members stand up for us people out here who do the working, living, and dying in this community. We need strong leaders now. Be a voice for us. We elected you, and we can elect someone else. Deb Matush. Following comments from Farrell Carfield, 4, 542 Sunnyside Avenue, Webster Groves, Missouri, 63119. It is true that 47, is it true that 47 million of the 173 million St. Louis County CARES Act funding may go to police and fire departments? And for basis of comparison, I'm hearing that 5.9 million has been dedicated to humanitarian response and 5.9 million to charity child care stabilization. I oppose this relative prioritization. I'm worried that recent municipal resolutions will lead the county to act based on the guise that this is what cities want. If the county decides to allocate CARES funds to public safety, it is true that municipalities want to claim a share. This is not the same as municipalities advocating that public safety is a COVID funding priority. Our police and fire departments are already generously funded, especially after the increased funding via Proposition P. I ask the County Council to reconsider spending on police and fire budgets and instead work for ways to better meet true need, housing, health care, child care, business recovery, and to continue to account for the disparate impact of COVID rather than distributing funds based on population count. Thank you for your consideration, Farrell Carfield. Following comments from Alyssa Sullivan, MSW, 229, I'm going to say this wrong, Karish, Webster Groves, Missouri, 63119. Watching how St. Louis County plans to spend the $173 million in CARES Act dollars. And if my understanding is correct, the Municipal League is leading a coordinated effort of city managers and city councils to lobby for $47 million of CARES Act dollars to pay for municipalities' police and public safety costs. This seems wrong. I don't understand why CARES dollars would go to municipalities to reimburse them, reimburse them for the regular payroll of police and fire services already accounted for and paid for in existing, in existing budgets. I understand there are differing opinions on the legal, legalities of spending CARES funds on previously budgeted items. However, even if you can make this decision legally, the question is, should you? About 30 municipality resolutions line up requests to be reimbursed for already budgeted and paid for regular payroll of police and fire services, not for overtime or time contributed to the emergency operations center. Time that municipal first responders have contributed to the emergency operations center should be reimbursed, but could be done through a program requiring municipalities to document expenses through FEMA ICS form 214s. CARES Act money should be distributed according to need, not according to population, as suggested by the Municipal League. St. Louis County should be spending our CARES funds on things other than police payroll. That's not what CARES Act money is for. I think I'm watching a coordinated $47 million money grab by municipalities with no consideration given to whether or not they actually need that money or pay for COVID-19 relief efforts. When I see that sum relative to child care stabilization and humanitarian response budgeted 
only at 5.9 and 9.5 million each, I become really concerned about your priorities for fund distribution. You're, you're going to spend five times more on already funded municipal police payrolls than humanitarian response at a time. The entire nation is talking about defunding police in favor of bolstering social support spending. Really? If this municipal money grab is legal, I would like it I would like to be on record stating that it is ethically and moral, morally questionable and is steeped in the intentional fragmentation of St. Louis County, which propagates systemic racism. Please do not distribute my hard-earned federal tax dollars according to this municipal league plan. Please be ethical and non-politically motivated stewards of those dollars meant to care for all of us according to our need. From Richard and Kathy Ellis, 7140 Christopher Drive, St. Louis, Missouri, 63129. It is no secret that Montenito plays a shell game and smoke and mirrors regarding their operation and how to circumvent zoning to force their way into neighborhoods. After all, Montenito is owned by Levine Lightman Capital Partners, a billion dollar corporation, so strategy comes at no cost for them. We are new to Missouri and we're very excited to find a wonderful neighborhood. We never would have imagined that a billion dollar corporation could be our neighbor. It does not seem legal that a psychiatric treatment facility would be allowed in a residentially zoned neighborhood. Additionally, we are concerned, Dr. Page, that as a medical professional who has taken an oath that you would consider a psychiatric treatment facility offering therapies such as cognitive behavioral therapy, interpersonal psychotherapy, and family-based therapy, just to name a few, to be in allowed use in a residential neighborhood. The Missouri Eating Disorders Council refers to residential levels of care as 24-hour supervised care for patients who are medically compromised. Montenito is not a group home. They should no longer be able to hide behind that shell. We chose to invest in a quiet residential community with wonderful neighbors, not to be neighbors with a commercial business. It is time for St. Louis County Council to stand up for and support us. Please do what is right for your residents. Thank you for listening. From Kim Baker, 409 Chooker Valley, Ellisville, Missouri, 63021. It's an absolute slap in the face to taxpayers to consider and or spend money on renaming streets in lieu of focusing on the financial needs of the county in time of a dramatic loss of tax revenue. We see your virtue signaling, Sam Page, and other county council members. It will be remembered for the empty and wasteful gesture that it is. Since some of you, Clancy and Dunaway, claim to respect African Americans, why did you not support Zena Hackworth's lifelong accomplishments? Let's put it out there in the open. It's because she is because she supports gun rights and is pro life. Seems African American accomplishments only matter when they align to your party or your values priorities. Masks an ineffective solution in practice. People are wearing masks from manufacturers who clearly disclaim on the product packaging the ability of the mask to prevent transmission of COVID and or SARS virus. Worse yet are those wearing homemade cloth masks that provide even less theoretical protection. Routinely, people using the mask to cover only their mouth, another breach of protocol. Applying mask-derived disease prevention data is invalid. It is invalid because 48% of John Q. public mask wearers are wearing a mask that provides 0 to 10% protection against any virus. Of the remaining 52%, it looks like 90% of those people are wearing a surgical-type mask incorrectly either with gaps on the corners and or only covering their mouth. From Diane Unger, 26 Baxter Lane, Chesterfield, Missouri, 63017. 
It will be so refreshing when I will be able to compliment you for your actions. Sadly, another week of disappointment has passed. I heard, Mr. Page, that you have decided our streets might need to be renamed. Surely you jest. I am stumped. What possible benefit will this produce for the residents of St. Louis County? Surely there are many more pressing and important issues for you to spend your time on besides renaming public streets. The names of our streets are just fine, thank you. Put this insane idea to rest and move on to more productive measures. I would hope you are focusing on law and order within our county. We need to show strong support for our police departments. They are the line of defense between law-abiding citizens and criminals. Cities across the nation are succumbing to mobs, riots, vandalism, destruction of property, and in some cases, murders. Our police deserve our strongest support and they deserve the support of the council. We want to keep St. Louis County safe. We need our police force. Lastly, I remember attending a council meeting when a group of students was honored for having had a winning baseball season. It was nice to see and good for them. Last week, however, Zena Hackworth, a black woman, could not get a vote from Clancy and Dunaway in honor of her accomplishments. Zena is a passionate woman who works tirelessly regarding social issues. It would have been nice to have acknowledged her lifelong work. From Suzanne Noonrider, 1418 Fairbrook Drive, St. Louis, Missouri, 63131. I am writing in response to last week's meeting where the majority of the meeting was spent discussing renaming St. Louis streets. History is not erased by changing street names or removing the statues. It is bad enough that the full breadth of history isn't being taught in our public schools. We don't need to waste taxpayer money and council time changing street names. COVID-19 cases are trending downward, yet churches are still under heavy restrictions. Yet it seems there are no mask or social distancing rules enforced if a person should elect to join in a protest of a statue, wrongful death, or any presumed injustice or whatever cause they feel led to protest. My two sons are lifeguards at public outside pools where they have to work in the heat for hours on end while wearing face masks. All patrons at the pools are required to wear masks while sitting on the pool deck in chairs that are already positioned in groups that are six feet or more apart. This is ridiculous and unsafe. Please consider letting St. Louis County fully open up. Let business owners decide for themselves whether or not to require masks for patrons. Let lifeguards do their jobs without suffocating behind masks and patrons of public pools sit on lawn chairs socially distanced from others without masks, which are not needed outside. Most importantly, please preserve the street names and statues in St. Louis County. Changing or removing them does not change our history or bring true lasting justice to anyone who feels oppressed. From Brenda Walschlager, 5537 Old Lime Ferry, St. Louis, Missouri, 63129. I am writing to inform you that my family and neighbors, a total of five, are opposed to the storage unit being built on Lime Ferry, Old Ferry, Old Lime, Lime Ferry Road. Below are the reasons. One, the area listed as 63129 is not developing new homes and the need is not there to have another facility for storage. We are developing hospital and hotels. Two, the existing ones that are less than a mile are not filled. Three, the residents of Prominence Place on the other side of Lime Ferry are against this. They have had at least 27 signed petition on record. Four, the water run will be an issue in heavy rain periods. It will contribute to more flooding. My neighbor and residents in the subdivision condo on Lime Ferry have attended many council meetings to let you know our objections to this matter. I hope that you will find that this is unnecessary development in this area and vote against this. Thank you and enjoy your evening.
Madam Chair, continuing. My name is Colleen George. I live at 3905 Manorwood Drive, 63125 in the 6th District of St. Louis County. They're back. How many times do the residents of District 6 have to inform the county that we, we do not want more any more storage units in our district? We have fought Covington Storage Solutions multiple times in the past. Several years ago, for, several years from building a storage facility at Lee May Ferry and Old Lee May Ferry Roads. As pointed out on many occasions before the Planning Commission and the County Council, there are seven storage facilities within five miles of this location. The last thing we need are more storage units in South County. Please give us, de <clears throat> please give us development that supports our investments. Storage unit facilities bring in few jobs and take up valuable space that could be utilized for multiple future developments. Please vote no next week on the Covington Storage Solutions. Thank you. Following comment, <clears throat> excuse me, from Tom Sullivan, 751 Syracuse, University City, Missouri, 63130. Madam Chair and members of the Council, I thought the discussion about the food contract for the county jail at last week's Committee of the Whole meeting went well. Several council members had good questions. I have made a formal request of Jail Director Raul Benasco for a document that lists the Justice Services Advisory Board members and their emails. There is no legal reason not to provide them. If not provided by today, he will have violated the law. The St. Louis American just published an article about minority inclusion with the construction of the $1.7 million morgue in our city that has hardly been used. A lot of blame is on the council majority that voted to give away its legislative duty and responsibility as mandated in the county charter. On June 2nd, I asked council chairwoman Lisa Clancy if she could provide answers as to the status of the $15.3 million the council approved as front money on the $240 million the county is to give toward the $480 million total cost of the convention center expansion. This, this is tax money that could have gone to help build up St. Louis County. I'm still waiting on a response from Councilwoman Clancy. The bond sale for the expansion has been held up. Also, I favor making June 19th a national holiday. One reason is, is because my birthday. Thank you for listening to my comments. <clears throat> Following comments from William Pyatt, 7184 Christopher Drive, St. Louis, Missouri, 6129. The residents of Oakville who are concerned about the out-of-state for-profit business that has been approved to be put in the middle of our residential neighborhood at 7190 Christopher Drive are curious about something and need clarity on a couple of things. We were told weeks ago that a re-review of the approval of this obviously inappropriate business venture by an out-of-state entity was put into motion and we would like to have the results by and would likely have the results by late June. We feel we are in the dark regarding this process and it will impact us most when you decide. You will move on and likely never give us another thought, and if you approve this atrocity for good, we will be the ones left to deal with the increased heavy traffic of employees and the del delivery trucks speeding up and down our once quiet street where children were felt safe playing in their yards, but no more. The 19 space parking lot you plan to put on the front of the street directly facing our neighbors' homes and ultimately the reduction in the value of our homes. Our most important financial investment of our lives. Yes, you would be putting the financial concern of some strangers from California who put this business in our neighborhood over your tax paying constituents. That seems unthinkable to me. These pr the primaries are coming soon and we, to, we need to know where we stand with you so we can decide how to stand, how you stand with us or if you do. Please provide some indication of when the results will be available to us and the sooner the better, please. Email is fine. Thank you, William Pyatt. Following comments from Leslie Cuse, I hope I pronounced that correctly, 7430 Gayola Place, St. Louis, Missouri, 63143. In learning more about the CARES Act, I believe the county should be in control over the equitable disbursement of CARES Act funds for COVID-19. 
According to the St. Louis County COVID case map, there is a clear disparity in who is hit hardest by COVID-19. Relief should be distributed to those most in need, and the county should be the governing body deciding, deciding how to disperse those funds. Thank you for your time. My name is Linda Krenning. I live at 7200 Christopher Drive. I'm writing to you about 7190 Christopher Drive. At the beginning of this St. Louis County Council meeting, you asked us to show respect towards the members on this council, but they don't show any respect towards the residents of Christopher Drive. We have told them about all the problems we're going to have if they allow Monte Nido to go ahead with their plans to make this medical treatment center, and you just won't listen to all our concerns. A few weeks ago, eight trucks were in front of 7190 Christopher, and the police had to be called because they were parked out in the street where cars were traveling on Christopher. And it was a dangerous situation, and it was exactly how it's going to be if you allow this to take place in our neighborhood. If I recall, Montanito wants 19 parking spots in front of this single-family home with, excuse me, with just, with just these eight trucks, it looked commercial, busy, and out of place to fit in next to all the residential homes surrounding it. It looked like a commercial building because that's exactly what it is. We were also told by an employee of Montanito that our council knew about this for the past two years. And do any of you think that this is right, that the residents should be kept in the dark? When will this change? When this will change all of our lives forever? I know this would not be happening in your neighborhood. Why are you permitting this in ours? We want the same things you want in life, to come home and enjoy peace and quiet after working hard all day and not have to deal with all the problems this will cause in our neighborhood. I only wish I could say what I really feel about you and Monty Nito, Linda Krenning. From Nelia Aubuchon, 9129 Niger Drive, St. Louis, Missouri, 63123. Not a day goes by that I don't meet and have enlightening conversations with fellow St. Louis County residents who did not care before, but who are now questioning the actions, authority, and unconstitutional edicts made by the Council and Department of Public Health in the name of public health and in order to protect the health of our community during this state of emergency. While folks can appreciate the intent and initial caution behind some of the recommendations, one that continues to baffle and frustrate parents such as myself is why St. Louis County continues to keep outside playgrounds and restrooms in county parks closed, despite the research and studies that have been published stating that they can be safely reopened. The mental health of adults and children is equally important to the physical health reopen St. Louis County Park Playgrounds so families can live and play as we continue to learn and negotiate how to move forward as a community. Our final comment this evening is from Ron Krenning, 7200 Christopher Drive. In my opinion, I think you could care less about all the letters, the concerns, and our feelings about how this will change our neighborhood because it's not you and this could never happen in your neighborhood because you wouldn't allow it. It's politics as usual. Why can't you see this is wrong for our neighborhood and do the right thing for the residents of Christopher Drive and say no to a company who could care less about this neighborhood or any other neighborhood in Oakville? You asked for respect so why are you not respecting the wishes of our neighborhood and making this wrong a right? I feel it's time for you to do the right thing and say no to an out-of-state business and protect the residents of your state and do your job and say no to Monte Nito. That is all the public comments this evening, Madam Chair. Thank you. That concludes public forum. We will proceed with introduction of bills. Bill number 140, introduced by Council Member Harder, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to enter into a conservation easement agreement and trail maintenance construction and access easement agreements with West Outer Road LLC 
and Simpson Packaged Concrete Company and to execute necessary documents. Bill number 141, introduced by Councilmember Clancy, an ordinance amending Title V, Chapter 502, St. Louis County Revised Ordinances, 1974, as amended, levy and collection of taxes by repe repealing and reenacting Section 502.410, continuing an emergency telephone tax. Bill number 142, introduced by Councilmember Clancy, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to accept a grant of up to $4,623,188 from the Missouri Department of Economic Development, Division of Workforce Development, and depositing and appropriating said monies as set forth herein for supportive programs and services related to the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act and authorizing the county executive to execute necessary contracts or other documents. Bill number 143, introduced by Council Member Clancy, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to accept community development block grant coronavirus funds of up to $3,333,172 from the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development as authorized by the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, CARES Act, appropriating the same for support of St. Louis County's response to the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic, authorizing the Director of Human Services or her designee to execute necessary documents to carry out activities authorized by the grant program and authorizing the County Executive to execute other necessary documents. Bill number 144, introduced by Council Member Clancy, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to accept special emergency solutions grant funds of up to $1,703,217 from the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development as authorized by the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, CARES Act, appropriating the same for support of assistance programs for individuals and families who are homeless or receiving homeless assistance and for support of homeless assistance and homelessness prevention activities to mitigate the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, authorizing the Director of Human Services or her designee to execute necessary documents to carry out activities authorized by the grant program and authorizing the county executive to execute other necessary documents. Bill number 145, introduced by Councilmember Clancy, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute an agreement with Union Pacific Railroad Company for preliminary engineering services in connection with replacement of Greenwood Boulevard Bridge number 424 and Railroad Street Pacific Avenue Bridge number 428 appropriating $40,000 from the unappropriated balance of the Transportation Highway Fund for support of said project and authorizing the Director of the Department of Transportation to execute additional necessary documents, AR-1670. Bill number 146, introduced by Council Member Clancy, an ordinance approving the fiscal year 2021 operating and capital budget of Bi-State Development Agency DBA Metro, providing for the method of disbursement of funds received from the State of Missouri from the Prop A half cent sales tax levied pursuant to Ordinance Number 24,245 for the Public Mass Transit Trust Fund for public transportation purposes from the amount received by St. Louis County from July 1, 2020 through June 30, 2021 providing for the method of disbursement of funds received by St. Louis County from the sales tax levied by ordinance number 6,792 from July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2021, net of the TIF transfers out, providing for the method of disbursement of funds in the public mass transit trust fund received from July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2021, from the quarter cent Prop M sales tax levied pursuant to ordinance number 17,153, net of TIF transfers out and specifying certain conditions for providing such funding to Bi-State Development Agency. Bill number 147, introduced by Council Member Trachis, an ordinance 
approving the application and preliminary plans for the amended development in the C8 planned commercial district of attractive land subject to conditions and repealing ordinance number 10798, PC 47-19, Covington's George Solutions, LLC. Madam Chair, that is all the bills. Thank you. We will move on to perfection. Bill number 20, introduced by Council Member Harder. I move to hold. Bill number 20 is held. Bill number 5, introduced by Council Members Fitch, Trakis, and Harder. I move to hold bill number 5. Bill number 5 is held. Bill number 32, introduced by Council Member Trakis. Move to hold bill number 32, please. Bill number 32 is held. Bill number 36, introduced by Council Member Fitch. I move to hold bill number 36. Bill number 36 is held. Bill number 76, introduced by Council Members Dunaway and Harder. I move to hold bill number 76. Bill number 76 is held. Bill number 109 introduced by council member Clancy. I move to hold bill number 109. Bill number 109 is held. Substitute bill number one for bill number 123 introduced by council member Fitch. I move to perfect bill, substitute bill number one for bill number 123. Second. Harder. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Substitute bill number one for bill number 123 is perfected. Bill number 135 introduced by Council Member Clancy. Um, we will likely be having a committee or we will be having a committee of the whole next week on this bill as well as bill number 136 and 137. Um, in the meantime, though, we I would like to be able to keep this moving. Um, I move to perfect bill number 135. Second. Gray. All in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 135 is perfected. Bill number 136, introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move to perfect bill number 136. Second days. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 136 is perfected. Bill number 137, introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move to perfect bill number 137. Second days. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 137 is perfected. Bill number 138, introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move to perfect bill number 138. Second. Gray. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 138 is perfected. Bill number 139, introduced by Council Member Trakis. Move to perfect bill number 139, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 139 is perfected. Final passage. Bill number 320, introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move to hold bill number 320. Bill number 320 is held. Substitute bill number two for bill number 385 introduced by council member Dunaway. I move to hold substitute bill number two for bill number 385. Substitute bill number two for bill number 385 is held. Bill number 14 introduced by council members Trachis, Days, Dunaway, Fitch, Walton Gray, Clancy, and Harder. Move to. I move to um, hold bill number 14, please. Bill number 14 is held. Bill number 132, introduced by council member Trakis. Move for final passage of bill number 132. Second, days. Roll call. 
Council Member Days? Aye. Council Member Dunaway? Aye. Council Member Fitch? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Clancy? Aye. Council Member Trakis? Aye. Council Member Harder? Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 132, there are seven ayes. Bill Number 132 is finally passed. Bill Number 133, introduced by Council Member Trakis. For final passage of Bill Number 133, please. Second, Harder. Roll. Council Member Days? Aye. Council Member Dunaway? Aye. Council Member Fitch? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Clancy? Aye. Council Member Trakis? Aye. Council Member Harder? Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 133, there are seven ayes. Bill Number 133 is finally passed. Bill Number 134, introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move final passage of Bill Number 134. Second, Gray. Roll call. Council Member Days? Aye. Council Member Dunaway? Aye. Council Member Fitch? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Clancy? Aye. Council Member Trakis? Aye. Council Member Harder? Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 134, there are seven ayes. Bill number 134 is finally passed. Moving on to resolutions. Madam Chair, we have one resolution this evening. Introduced by Council Members Walton Gray, Days, Dunaway, and Clancy. Please read the resolution. Yes, ma'am. Resolution. Whereas on June 19th, 1865, Nearly two and one half years after President Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation, Emancipation Proclamation officially outlawed slavery in Texas and the other states of the Confederacy, Union Army General Gordon Granger read General Order No. 3, which proclaimed that all slaves in Texas were free. And whereas Juneteenth, also known as Freedom Day, Jubilee Day, Liberation Day, and Emancipation Day, originated in Texas to commemorate the issuance of that federal order. And whereas Juneteenth is now observed annually on the 19th of June as a celebration of the emancipation of all of those who were enslaved throughout the United States. And whereas on June 16th, 2020, St. Louis County Executive Sam Page made the following declaration. Quote, St. Louis County should be a place we embrace and celebrate the diversity of our community where we learn lessons from our complicated history and where we commit ourselves to action. That is our plan on Friday. This Friday, June 19th, marks the anniversary of the end of slavery in the United States. It is important that we all take the opportunity to commemorate the historic gravity of Juneteenth and the challenges that our black friends and neighbors have faced since and that they face today. It is a day to appreciate the changes that we have seen since the 19th century, but also to reflect upon how we can each play a role in the changes that are yet to come. To facilitate Friday as a day of reflection, we will be observing June 19th as a countywide holiday this year. County offices will be closed. The day will be administered as other county holidays, end quote. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the County Council of St. Louis County, Missouri, as follows. Section 1, the County Council expresses the strongest possible support for an agreement with the County Executive Statement and actions regarding the observance of Juneteenth, 2020, in St. Louis County. Section 2, furthermore, the Council commits to working with the County Executive, the Department of Administration, the Divis Division of Personnel, and the Civil Service Commission to develop and implement a meaningful annual commemoration of Juneteenth in St. Louis County. Section 3, the Acting Administrative Director shall send certified copies of this resolution to the County Executive, the Director of the Department of Administration, and the Director of the Division of Personnel and the Chair of the Civil Service Commission. I move for the adoption of resolution number one. Second days. 
Roll call. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Uh, Madam Chair, I tried to uh, chime in to ask for some discussion. Uh, would you like me to do it now? Um, sure. Yeah, I, somebody covered covered me. At any rate, um, I like the resolution. I did email Councilwoman Gray this afternoon and said that I would wholeheartedly support this with the exception of there are at least four times, as you just heard in the reading of the resolution, where the county executive, Sam Page, is mentioned in, in this resolution. And it just seemed like an awful lot of political back uh, padding. Uh, and I just thought it was unnecessary in the resolution. So I will be voting to abstain. I didn't write the resolution, the attorney did. So I, I hadn't even thought about the, the fact that his name was mentioned. Four she times. wrote it. She yeah. wrote it without my, you know, this, the way she wrote it. Okay, move on. Yeah, I wonder if you got the, the right copy of it, Councilman Fitch, because I counted one time it was mentioned in the copy I received this afternoon, but so be it. Right. Uh, I have what I thought was the most recent version, which was the second one, which is this one I printed. So your vote is abstain? Yes. Okay, next. I don't see that. Councilmember Gray. Aye. Councilmember Clancy. Aye. Councilmember Trakis. I so much wanted to support this resolution, but for the reasons mm. articulated by Councilman Fitch, I abstain. Councilmember Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on resolution number one, you have five ayes and two abstains. Resolution number one is adopted. Moving on to unfinished business. Item number one. Um, we'll hold on the order of business and that will be the order. Item number two, seventh district. Receive file and the subdivision plat be approved as recommended. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to new business, Madam Chair, we have one prepared order this evening. A per Prepared order in the matter of the awarding of a contract for the provision of depository and banking services. I move for the adoption of order number one. Second days. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Order number one is adopted. That brings us to the end of our agenda this evening. Any comments from the council? Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Madam Chair, uh, uh, we talked, as you know, before the meeting about opening up the meeting uh, back to our normal meeting place and public meeting. And uh, I would wonder if you could uh, explain what action you've taken uh, because of my letter going, going forward. So as I shared with you and with the rest of the council members this afternoon as I made my rounds that um, it is our duty and responsibility to continue to prioritize the health and safety of council members, staff members, and the general public. And that is going to be our priority as we consider if and when to reopen the chambers. Um, I have spoken with the Department of Public Health Director Spring Schmidt um, about this issue and asked for her advice and counsel um, in order to reopen the chamber safely. Um, she is preparing to send a team of her staff members out to our council chambers and the adjoining offices, take a look at our, our facilities and make some recommendations to us about um, what we can do to make sure it is a, a safe place for us to be in the face of a continued um, public health uh, threat. Um, so I expect to um, hear from her um, probably within the next week or so um, about the results of her team's visit and receive a documented list of recommendations. And then we will have 
a chance to consider those recommendations and decide whether or not um, and under what conditions we would like to move forward. So if, if it's my understanding, if she says that it's possible, uh, are you in favor of opening up the meeting to uh, our normal public meeting? Well, I think it's going to be a little bit more complicated than that, Councilman. So I think it would be premature for me to um, say definitively. I will be definitely, though, looking to what um, her staff and the rest of what what her staff and public health professionals recommends. Again, we need to make sure that that we are prioritizing the health and safety of staff, council members, and the public. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I reread the resolution, and I don't know if it's possible to go back there, but um, I'm gonna. I'd, I'd like, if possible, to withdraw my abstention and vote aye for the resolution. I think that it's not as highly politicized as I had originally read it, and so if if it's possible, um, I just it would appreciate the vote being changed to aye. If not, at least I'm on record. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Drakus. Um, I'm going to have to defer to our county counselor on that. Um, is it possible to um, let the record reflect a change in Councilman Drakus's vote? I think uh, it would be appropriate, Madam Chair, for a motion to suspend the rules and return to that item to address that. Okay. Um, I make a motion to suspend the rules and return to resolution number one. I will second that motion, Madam Chair. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, roll call. Council Member Days? Aye. Council Member Dunaway? Aye. Council Member Fitch? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Clancy? Aye. Council Member Trakis? Aye. Council Member Harder? Aye. Madam Chair, on resolution number one, there are seven ayes. Excellent. Resolution number one is adopted. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, any, other, any other comments tonight before we close out? Just to understand what we just did, the seven to nothing vote was to go back and revisit it. That wasn't the vote, the final vote. Is that correct? No, I believe it was the final vote. I believe that we had a motion to return it to the item. The motion carried, and then we did the roll call vote for the item. Okay. So it was my misunderstanding. I want to keep my abstention. Madam Chair, yes. Madam Chair, just to back up a little bit, I believe your motion was to suspend the rules and then there need to be a set second vote again on the resolution. That's the way I understood it. Okay, so we did a roll. We did a roll call vote to suspend, suspend the, the rules. rules. Okay, that was Take not a simple. Vote. Was not a voice vote. That you're saying that was required to be a roll call vote. I think you could do it, it to be safe, required. so that everyone understands and everyone's Sorry. in the level playing field. That would be the safest thing to do. Okay, then we'll, so do I need to spend the rules again to go back to that? Or do we need to just do the vote on the resolution now? If you so choose to do the re-vote on the resolution so that everyone's on the same page, so be it. Okay, so at this point, we will do a roll call vote on the resolution. Okay. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Abstain. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. I'm sorry, Madam Chair, on resolution number one, there are six ayes and one abstain. Resolution number one is adopted. Thank you, Madam Chair. I apologize for the confusion. That's okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Trakis. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The meeting is adjourned. Have a good evening, everyone.
You as well. Thank you.